Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Health by Heather Hirsch. As you can see, I have a new setup, so I have some really big news coming next week. But in this week's video, I wanna talk with you all about the different types of progesterone. Should you use a synthetic, is bioidentical better or best? That's what we're gonna get into, so if you're interested, stick around. So one of the big questions when women are starting menopausal hormone therapy is what type of formulation to use in your hormone therapy. Now, as a reminder, for women who have a uterus, you have to take a progesterone with an estrogen. And an estrogen really does help the majority of menopausal symptoms. Hot flashes, night sweats, brain fog, bone health, pelvic floor health, hair, skin, and nails, all of that comes from estrogen. But if you've got your uterus, which many women do unless you've had it surgically removed, you also have to take a progesterone. The main reason that you need to add the progesterone is because if you took estrogen alone, that could increase your risk for uterine cancer. And we certainly don't wanna give you another problem. Now, if you take the right dose of progesterone to match your estrogen, and this is where a really knowledgeable physician is crucial, you're at no risk for uterine cancer, but it's crucial that somebody gets this correct. Now, if you don't have a uterus, meaning you've had a hysterectomy, then you don't need to add a progesterone. You can take estrogen alone. Remember, the main reason to take a progesterone is to protect you from getting uterine cancer. And if your uterus is gone, you're not gonna get cancer. Also, not to confuse you, but you can take a progesterone without an estrogen. So check out this video here. It's all about progesterone, and I actually did this in two parts. So that was part one, and part two is over here. But this is gonna tell you all about how to add a progesterone without an estrogen. Briefly, who would use a progesterone without an estrogen? Well, anyone who can't take estrogen because of a history of blood clot, they choose not to take an estrogen, or they may get benefits from the progesterone alone, particularly in sleep, because some formulations of progesterone can make you feel a little sleepy, which can help if insomnia is a big problem for you. One question that I get asked very commonly is what if I've had an ablation, do I still need to take a progesterone with my estrogen? And the answer is absolutely yes. Even though you've had an ablation, which means that you no longer bleed more, most likely, or that it significantly reduced your bleeding, you could still get uterine cancer, so you do need to take a progesterone if you also are taking an estrogen after an ablation. Another question is, what if I have an IUD? Well, actually, most IUDs are progesterone releasing. For example, the brand names Mirena, Kylena, Lyletta, they do have progesterone and you don't need to add an extra progesterone because the progesterone medication in that formulation is going right to your uterus. Again, I've got a great video here on why and how to use IUDs through the perimenopause transition to break that down a little bit more detail. All right, so let's get back to the main question is, what is the best formulation of progesterone? So many people start to break this down by, putting them into two categories, synthetic and bioidentical. So let's identify what each of those is. Synthetic progestins are usually referred to progesterones that are made in a laboratory. Some common names for this is medoxyprogesterone acetate or MPA or agestin. These are synthetic progestins that are made chemically that have a slightly different formulation than the progesterone that we endogenously make. Bioidentical, on the other hand, means that it's a little bit plant-derived. It's still made in a lab. It's not like I can go outside, take a bunch of herbs and plants and make natural progesterone and give it to you. No, bioidentical really quite frankly means that even though it's also made in a lab, it's made from more naturally derived products and looks chemically very similar, nearly identical to the progesterones that we make endogenously, meaning we make in our own bodies. The most commonly referred to bioidentical progesterone is micronized natural progesterone or prometrium, as it typically will say on your bottle. So when it comes to formulation, is synthetic or bioidentical better? Well, this is a really interesting question. And actually, 
I really do believe that I have somewhat of a straightforward answer for you, and that is that most NAMS and menopause experts, NAM stands for the North American Menopause Society, but those are the governing body of evidence-based menopause doctors here in the United States, and the majority of us do favor and tend to choose micronized natural progesterone permetrium or the bioidentical progesterones over the synthetic progesterones, and let me break down why. The Women's Health Study, the biggest randomized controlled trial ever done on hormone therapy, showed a very slight increased risk of breast cancer in the estrogen plus progesterone arm. Not the estrogen arm only, in fact, they had reductions in breast cancer. Watch this video on the WHI because it's just so good and gives so much more detail about the WHI. But the one thing that you really need to hone in on is that the formulation of progesterone Progesterone in the WHI was the synthetic form, medroxyprogesterone acetate. The increased risk was four women out of thousand over five years who took oral Prempro. But I want you to know that more recent studies have been done looking at women using micronized natural progesterone and an estrogen and finding there to not be a statistically significant increased risk in breast cancer. In fact, when I spoke at the North American Menopause Meeting this October, I presented this paper. It really breaks down the different formulations of progesterone, showing that yet again, in a study in the early 2000s, the synthetic progesterones very narrowly did increase the risk of breast cancer, whereas micronized progesterones did not. Overall, the main benefit may be in the slight reduction in breast cancer risk associated with hormone therapy, but this is a really big deal because most women's fears about starting hormone therapy really arise from the fact that we have been told or taught to believe that hormone therapy will drastically increase our risk of breast cancer. And now we can really see that with bioidentical progesterone, AKA that prometrium and an estrogen, there is not a significant increased risk of breast cancer. Now, before you go, there's one really big important point here and that bioidentical does not mean compounded. Bioidentical prometrium is an FDA approved progesterone. It can and should be purchased at a commercial pharmacy like CVS, Walgreens, or your local drugstore. It's usually covered and we know that it is FDA approved, which means that the dose that you are prescribed by your doctor definitely should match and will match the estrogen prescribed by your knowledgeable doctor to ensure that your uterus stays healthy. Micronized natural progesterone also has some benefits in sleep. For some women at 200 or 300 milligrams, it can really help improve insomnia or tossing and turning, waking up in the middle of the night associated with those menopausal symptoms. So the verdict is out in that bioidentical prometrium is typically preferred over the synthetic progesterones with just one caveat. And that is that if you are doing really well on one of the synthetic progesterones, if you really like your medication, if overall you don't have a strong family history of breast cancer and you're, you've been on this medication for a while and you're doing really well, I don't necessarily think that you need to switch. This is really actually just kind of an interesting debate, something to think about if you're first starting on hormone therapy and breaking down those formulations. But again, let's say you've been on Prempro for many years, you're doing really well, you otherwise have no issues with it. I don't necessarily know that I would go through the trouble of having you switch unless you just psychologically would feel better. And overall, it's really individualized and up to you and your doctor via shared decision making. If you found this video helpful, please share it to a friend or on your social media. I also teach the Reclaiming Menopause Masterclass this is a course designed for women who are interested in hormone therapy and want to know absolutely everything there is to know. I teach you how to put it together, what doses you need, and how to have an efficient conversation with your doctor. You can check that out in the link in the description below. You guys are so wonderful. Thank you so much for being amazing subscribers. Stick around next week for some exciting news. I'll see you guys next week for a brand new video. Bye.